We've talked about everything that's on the outside of bacteria in their cell envelopes. Now it's time to talk about what's on the inside in the cytoplasm of bacteria. And we're going to start out by talking about bacterial DNA. So the bacterial genome is broken down into one large chromosome, which is a double-stranded, circular, very large segment of DNA that contains all of the essential genes that bacteria need just to survive, just to grow and divide. Also, bacteria can possess smaller circular double-stranded segments of DNA called plasmids. And plasmids are very important because they're easily transmitted from one bacterium to another, and they play a key role in increasing genetic variation amongst bacteria. And this, in general, is crucial to bacterial survival because the genes that bacteria trade from one to another can contain uh, antibiotic resistance properties, um, code for toxins, code for virulence factors such as flagella, pili, and capsules, some of the virulence factors that we talked about earlier, um, and just a number of things that can help bacteria survive better in a hostile environment. And so there are four main ways that bacteria can increase their genetic variation. Transformation, conjugation, transposition, and transduction. The first one we'll talk about is transformation. So let's just say this bacterium is moving along and it encounters a raw piece of DNA on the ground that was possibly from a bacterium that was lysed. And so if it is termed a competent bacterium, meaning that its cell wall possesses properties that allow it to actually take up this raw segment of DNA and incorporate it into its chromosome, then uh, that process is called transformation. Because this, this, this piece of DNA that it just picked up could contain special genes that code for, as we mentioned earlier, antibiotic resistance, toxins, and other virulence factors. And actually, there are three main organisms that can perform transformation, and they are Streptomoniae, Haemophilus influenza type B, and Neisseria. You could remember I'm using the mnemonic SHIN. If you remember, we had a mnemonic called SHIN SKIES, which helped us remember all of the encapsulated bacteria. These are also encapsulated bacteria. And another thing that's unique to them is that they can all, all these three can all cause meningitis, or inflammation of the meninges in the central nervous system, and they all possess an enzyme called IgA ACE. And this enzyme says what it does. Um, it degrades IgA. So IgA is normally secreted from the mucosal surfaces, um, for example, from our respiratory tracts and our gastrointestinal tracts. And its purpose is to prevent the adherence, and that's how I remember it, IgA for adherence. It prevents the adherence of bacteria to these mucosal surfaces. And so if these three bacteria possess IgA ACE, then they will degrade the IgA and be able to adhere and be able to infect and invade our bodies and cause possibly meningitis. The next way that bacteria can share genetic information is through conjugation. And this is a direct method, and you can think of conjugation or uh, conjoining, coming together. And this essentially is bacterial sex. So we have two bacteria here. Um, every bacterium possesses a chromosome, as I already mentioned. But sometimes a bacterium can possess a special plasmid with genes that are necessary for conjugation. And this bacterium is termed an F plus cell. And the bacterium that will be receiving this plasmid is called an F minus cell because it is lacking the conjugation genes. And uh, if this plasmid is incorporated into the chromosome, then this bacterium is then called an HFR cell. And what's special about this is that when the plasmid decides to leave the chromosome, it can actually grab and take with it some of the flanking chromosomal genes. So you see here. So we'll discuss both HFR bacteria and F plus bacteria at the same time when we're talking about conjugation. So as I mentioned earlier, bacteria can possess this special grappling hook thing called a pili or a pilus that can reach out, latch onto, and pull in another bacterium. 
And so after it does this, after this F positive or HFR cell grabs onto the F minus cell, it then forms a cytoplasmic bridge which will allow the sharing of this, these plasmids to the F minus cell. They are first replicated, so let's deal with the HFR bacterium first. It is replicated and then delivered to the F minus cell. In the F positive cell, uh, a similar event takes place where it's replicated. However, there are no, notice there are no pieces of chromosomal DNA present on this F positive plasmid. And then this, this plasmid is delivered to the F minus cell. And now that this F minus cell possesses a plasmid that contains conjugation genes, it is no longer an F minus cell, it becomes an F plus cell or an HFR cell if it is incorporated into the chromosome. The next way that bacteria can increase their genetic variation is through transposition. And that's accomplished through transposons, which are jumping genes. And that's because they jump either from one segment of a plasmid to another, or even from a plasmid to a chromosome, or a chromosome back to a plasmid. But while they're on the chromosome, they may pick up some flanking chromosomal genes before they jump back to the plasmid. And as we know, bacteria can share plasmids with each other, and so this bacterium could deliver uh, these flanking chromosomal genes to another bacterium. And this, this process of transposition is responsible for most of the genetic variability among bacteria. The final way that bacteria increase their genetic variation is through a process called transduction. And this is the transfer of genes from one bacterium to another via an unaware virus. Now viruses are essentially divided into two components. The first is the outer layer called a capsid the second is what's on the inside, and it's uh, the virus's genetic information, either in the form of DNA or RNA. Now, another name for viruses that specifically infect bacteria are called bacteriophages, or bacteriophage, or even phage for short. And there are two types of transduction, generalized transduction and specialized transduction. We'll talk about both. So in generalized transduction, a virus lands on top of a bacterium, injects its genetic information within the bacterium, leaves. And this genetic information actually codes for enzymes that will break down the bacterial DNA, and chromosome and plasmid, and also enzymes that will replicate the viral DNA, and even enzymes that will generate more capsids that the new DNA can then enter and leave and move on to other bacteria and repeat the same process over and over. However, in generalized transduction, which is a packaging error, it's a problem with viral packaging, they accidentally package some of the bacterial DNA rather than their own. And so this capsid, so that this bacterial cell is lysed, and then the capsid moves on to another bacterium and does what it normally does, which is inject genetic material. However, it's not the viral genetic material, it's actually the bacterial DNA. And this could contain special genes uh, for antibiotic resistance or um, other virulence factors like toxins, and this can then be incorporated into the new bacterium and increase genetic variation that way. Specialized transduction is a problem with excision. It's an excision error. And so there are special types of viruses or bacteriophages called temperate phages or temperate viruses. And uh, a way to help remember what they do is that they, are, they have a mild temperament, and you'll see why, or that they are temporarily incorporated into the bacterial chromosome. So this virus injects its DNA, and like I said, it's temporarily incorporated into the bacterial chromosome. And why they have a mild temperament is because they don't immediately lyse the bacterial DNA and, and destroy the bacterium. They actually hide out in the chromosome for a while until some signal like, say, UV light or some other signal 
causes this virus then to jump out of the bacterial chromosome. However, it may accidentally bring along with it some of the flanking chromosomal genes from the bacterium, which is why I said it's a problem with, with excision. So it can bring along with it some flanking bacterial genes, and then the virus does what it normally does. The, the DNA codes for enzymes that will replicate the viral DNA, enzymes that will degrade the bacterial DNA, and enzymes that will generate more viral capsids. And so normally the viral DNA is just injected in, in the capsid and then goes and infects other bacteria. However, with specialized transduction, the piece of DNA that contains the flanking bacterial DNA is actually packaged in the viral capsid and this goes and moves on to a new bacterium, injects this fragment of DNA in the new bacterium and these flanking chromosomal genes that are from the old bacteria are actually incorporated into the new bacterium and they can lead to an increase in genetic variation by giving this new bacterium possibly antibiotic resistance or toxins or other virulence factors. And so this concludes the talk about bacterial DNA. We'll move on to other cytoplasmic structures in the next lecture.